Hey, Brianna, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hello, Brianna. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We're glad to have you here because you've done some amazing things with your money and that you have knocked out a bunch of debt. And we're so glad that you're here to share your journey and all that has come along with the process that you have endured over the last couple of years. But before we start talking about your debt journey, can you just take a moment to say hello to everyone that is tuned in and let them know what you are all about? Sure. So my name is Brianna Brown. I graduated from a private university back in 2017 in New York, and I came out with $30,000 in student loans. Two years later, on the exact date that I actually graduated, I was able to pay off $30,000 in student loans. And here I am today trying to help others do the same. That's awesome. So let's dig a little deeper. Um, $30,000, that's a lot of money to pay off in two years. So what uh, sparked even the thought and the idea of getting out of debt for you? Um, and you did it as soon as you got out of school. So mm -hmm. what was that about? Um, walk us through that. Sure. So back in 2017, you know, the whole process of graduating, you're trying to find your first full-time job. Um, I did get a job as a customer service representative. Um, but before I wanted to make any other big financial decisions after graduating, I knew that I wanted to make the decision to pay off my student loans because I do know a lot of people that are burdened by the economic hardships of student loans. So I knew I wanted to break that cycle. So I knew that was my first challenge that I wanted to accomplish before getting to anything else as far as buying a car, um, buying a house, anything of that nature. So I knew that was my first thing I wanted to accomplish. How was that cultivated in you? Because so many, the way that the, the system is set up now, the student loans are so easily mm -hmm. accessed and it is so normalized. And it's made to believe like it's just a normal part of life. And mm -hmm. you, you launched this as soon as you graduated. You said, I ain't paying off my student loan debt. Mm -hmm. Where did that thought come from? Was this, was this how you were raised to be adverse to debt? Was it just your observations of people that you knew who were struggling mm -hmm. with student loan debt? Talk us through that. Definitely, definitely my observations with people that I grew up with and just hearing like conversations around just saying, you know, I wish I could get rid of these debt. I wish I could get rid of all this debt that I have um, on top of like mortgages and other bills that other people have. So I knew I wanted to break that cycle. And then of course my mom, who was like my momager, I call her my momager. She's my mentor. She is my accountability partner. She is definitely, she's like the finance guru. Um, without her, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I would definitely say she has definitely influenced me to get on track with far as my finances and you know make the best decisions early on in my lifetime. So talk about what was like the first step, because I know getting out of school uh, for a lot of students is the next step that really, really just consumes a lot of their time is finding a job if they don't currently already have one. Mm -hmm. And so uh, walk us through that. Were you looking for a job? Were you already currently um, with your employer? How and when did you actually hit the button to start paying off? To the start money? the challenge? Mm -hmm. So my first, like I said, my first job outside of college, I was working as a customer service representative for this cable company not making too much, but making a decent amount while living at home. Um, but it wasn't until May, so May 2018, so a year after graduating, I actually got a new job um, at my current job that I'm at right now, making a little bit more money. And I said, you know what, I'm going to actually do this and put all my money towards my student loans. I don't have any, I don't have kids. I don't have a car. I still live at home. So I was like, I don't want to just blow all this money that I'm making right now. I actually want to put it to good use. So that's when I really started the um, student loan challenge was back in May 2018. So that's when I wanted to be more serious and be more aggressive with my payments. Wow. So is it fair to say that um, you paid off the 30000 pretty much majority of it, in a year? Um, so it is technically like a year and a half because when you think about it, after you graduate, your, your payments don't start till six months after you graduate. So December 2018 was when I made my first, actually, I made my first payment before the actual real payment because I had a graduation party and, you know, I received some funds from that. So I used all those funds to go to my student loans. And then December 18 was when the official, excuse me, the official payment actually started. So yeah, a year and a half is really when I paid off all my loans. So definitely less than two years. Okay. So let's break that down a little bit. When you were sure. making, when you were making the payment, were you also throwing extra towards it? Like when did you start, sending above whatever your monthly payment was? 
May 2018. So oh, a was... year after graduating, that's when I really started to be more aggressive with my payments. So that's sure. amazing. So technically it's a yeah. year. That's also awesome. Technically, wow. yes. Yeah. <laughs> technically so it is a year. how did you handle motivation? Because we live in a society where we are always on our devices. Mm -hmm. Social media gives us lots of imagery around what we should be spending our money on. We have lots of advertisements that are geared toward the very things that we like. You are fresh out of college, got your new job, you're adulting, you're, you're, you're doing your thing, trying to build your, your new life. Mm -hmm. How did you keep the tunnel vision necessary to pay off so much debt in such a small amount of time with so many distractions available to take you off track? Luckily, I do have a group of friends that just keep me on track. Um, I don't have a, I have a handful of friends, not too many, but um, definitely my friends, my mom for sure, kept me on track. You know, she said it's only temporary. Once you get this out the way, you'll be free from all of this debt. And, you know, I just had to keep her in the back of my mind and just kind of isolating myself from a lot of things that are happening in society as far as like social media, like you said. Um, I did take a break from social media, just kind of honed in and had tunnel vision on my goal. And that's kind of what kept me focused because after graduating, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was still trying to figure out my life. Um, so I felt like this challenge kind of gave me like a pointer to just focus on this one thing that I knew I wanted to accomplish and just made me feel proud. So I knew I had to just focus on it. That's incredible. So May 2018, when you said, you know what, I really want to get this deck gone. What were some of the steps? What were some of the practical things that you did in order to do that? So the first steps that I did was cut back on eating out because I'm very big on eating out <laughs> at work. Um, I definitely did a lot of grocery shopping, meal prepping. Um, like I said, I didn't have a car, so I didn't have any car notes to pay off. Um, and that's pretty much it. Living at home, just cutting back. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes right now as we speak. Um, as far as cutting off expenses, that's pretty much it. And then working overtime as much as possible. My mom actually wanted me to get a second job, but I didn't make that one of my priorities, unfortunately. So I knew that I had to make overtime as far as one of my priorities. Yeah. So I think that's big. Um, you mentioned that you were able to live at home, didn't have to pay rent. Um, mm -hmm. And so I love how your mother, she too wanted you to accomplish this goal. And so mm -hmm. that was her way of giving back to you and um, paying it forward. And she right. did that. But you could have very well have taken your, your, your money and you could have blown it. You could have wasted it. But instead Absolutely. you decided, no, let me maximize my current situation. So talk about that because I think there are a lot of people that are in your shoes. They may be living at home or living somewhere else and not necessarily have a lot of overhead. Talk about how maximizing your current situation helped you achieve your goal much, much quicker. Absolutely. So I was blessed to even um, mention this to my parents. I said, hey, I want to start this challenge. If you can just, you know, work with me as far as not allowing me to pay rent while I work on this challenge, then we can work with something. And then they actually agreed on it and were able to move forward with that process. And then after I paid off my loans, I was able to, you know, contribute to the household. But yeah, if you're living at home, I definitely say take advantage as much as possible. Um, it's definitely a blessing because living on your own is hard. Bills um, do add up, but if you can live at home and just use it to your advantage, I would definitely agree on that. And if parents are agree, if your parents are definitely um, receptive to what you want to achieve, you're not just sitting around, you know, partying, going out, wasting your money, you're actually working towards something. I, I think they'll be more understanding when it comes to that. Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com. So when you started this journey, did you know that it was going to take you pretty much a year to hurry up and knock it all out? Or like, was that your original plan? 
so the goal was to pay it off with by December of this year. Well, last year, I didn't do that. So that's why it kind of came out a little bit over a year. Um, but you know, I made it like a fun challenge. I actually started a YouTube channel where I documented each month or each week I tried to, where I kind of just updated people where I was at with my student loans and what I've been doing. Um, and that kind of faded out because keeping up with the YouTube channel is a bit difficult while working a job. Um, but, you know, the goal was to pay it off in a year, um, but I didn't happen. I did end up with 9,000 left, I believe, at the beginning of this year. And then I just knocked it out and was able to pay it off within the two years of graduating. Talk about your process with a private student uh, loans. There are others who have private student loans as well, too. Um, how did you approach uh, your student loan carrier to let them know that you even wanted to apply extra? And what was that process like? Did you send in an extra payment on top of that? Did you have to mail it in? Could you do it mm -hmm. online? So what were the logistics around that? So I did call them. I was, because I wasn't too familiar with how the payment plan worked. I knew they had automatic pay. I wasn't really I wasn't really into that because I knew they only have you pay the minimum. Um, but I did speak to her. She said, you know, if you want to make more payments, you are gladly enough to make more payments than just what we send out to you. Um, it is online. I don't have to send anything. You could, but I just did everything on the app that they gave me. Um, so I get paid every two weeks. So I would every two weeks, I would send payments to my student loans, um, whatever I could afford. So I do have a budget. So I'm able to kind of navigate where my money is going and kind of seeing where I can what I could do the next week and the week after that. So I kind of made it, it wasn't once a week, it was actually twice a week I was making payments to my student loans. So that way it was more aggressive and paying off interest as well too. As you were going through this process, was it all smooth sailing or did some obstacles come up that tried to take you off track? And if they did, how did you fight through them to stay focused and on path mm -hmm. to that freedom journey? So there, there were a few challenges. I think the biggest challenge for me was trying to not take as many vacations as possible. Um, a lot of my friends, you know, we graduate, we want to enjoy the time that we have off and just explore the world. So I think taking a lot of vacations definitely helped me back a bit. I could have been done with my loans a bit sooner, but that's a learning lesson. Um, I think that's like kind of the biggest thing that kind of helped me back a bit was taking trips. Mm. Now, you know, it's something just, it, it just dawned on me. You said you went to a private university in New York. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. private colleges are expensive. New York is expensive. Absolutely. Yet, yet you only came out with $30,000 in student loan debt. Yes. So what were you doing before graduation that <laughs> allowed you to not have a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars worth of student loan debt from a private university? I honestly have to give all the praise to my mom. Um, she's the one that actually was able to finesse some way with financial aid to kind of, you know, work the, through the system. It's all about working through the system and of course applying to scholarships as well. I did apply to a few scholarships, not as many as I should have or I could have, but I did apply to a few that kind of allowed me to lower my tuition fee. Um, but other than that, my mom is definitely the one to give all the credit to for that, for sure. Wow. So let's fast forward to that day where <laughs> all your hard work had paid off and you realized, man, I'm about to make the final student loan payment. Talk us through that day because people love to know what that's like because they're fighting for it themselves. And they're right. curious, like, how did that go? So can you paint the picture, describe yeah. that day for us? So I went onto my phone. I knew today was going to be the day. Um, I went into the app. It's actually the Nelnet app that I have. And I made my last payment. There was no like congratulations or anything, unfortunately, but you know, internally I felt that kind of weight lifted off of my shoulders. And it was just, it was a surreal moment because I never thought I would get to this moment. And a lot of people, like you said, you know, are waiting to feel that moment. But I was kind of waiting for Nelnet to kind of give me a call or an email. To this day, I have, actually haven't received anything from them yet. So I'm not sure if they are gonna send anything in the mail, but overall it's just a weight lift off my shoulders and it's amazing, amazing feeling. Well, talk about um, your family and your friends. You said that you um, you did a YouTube channel and we'll make sure that we have your links uh, in the show notes as well, but talk about the approach that you took with announcing it to your family and your friends and what was the response like? So they kind of knew, I kept them in the loop as I was going. Um, they kind of knew like, hey, I said, hey, my last payment's gonna be May 23rd. And, you know, they were there, they stuck with me throughout the whole journey and they just, they were just super supportive. 
really happy. Of course, my mom is super happy and, you know, she's not really like a congratulations pat on the back kind of person. She's just like, I knew you would do it. So let's just move on to the next challenge kind of thing. But, you know, I know she's very happy and excited that I actually stuck with something because usually I start a project and don't finish. But with this one, I was able to finish it through. So what's next for you? What do you have as your next goals that you would like to accomplish? So right now I am still living at home. I'm currently working towards paying, not paying, sorry, working towards saving $10,000 um, right now before the end of the year is over. That's a little challenge for me that I set for myself. And then of course, just learning more about financial literacy and um, more about investing. I want to kind of put my money towards more things as far as investing and real estate, things of that nature. So that's kind of the next goal for me right now. You set a big goal for yourself. Yeah. You hit it, right? <laughs> You paid off $30,000 in really a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So what did you learn about yourself that you didn't know before going through this challenge? Um, I learned that, let me see, what did I learn? I think mentally I'm stronger than I think. Um, I think everything is all about a mindset. If I can do it, so can someone else. I think I learned that um, it's definitely possible once you put your mind to it, really, anything is possible. I think that's something that I definitely learned throughout this journey. That's good. If you had a chance to go turn around and go back to, let's say, your university that you just graduated from, and uh -huh. there's a bunch of uh, young people about to walk across that stage, they got student loan debt, and to them, it's no big deal, or to them, because of what society says, they'll always have a student loan payment. So they're they're not sure if it's worth going through the process where they should speed it up and get out of debt now. What would you say to them if they had those types of thoughts? Um, so I just want to like reference my friend that I graduated with. So she actually, we went to the same university. She actually came out with no debt. She was able to get over $150,000 in student in scholarships, excuse me. So you always have those two scenarios. You have one person that actually came out with no debt, was able to put all her hard work towards her scholarships and just hone in on that and came out with no debt. And then you have another person that came out with debt, but that actually worked hard towards paying off that debt. So I think um, just paving your own path, whatever you feel like you can uh, do, it's possible. So of course you're gonna come out with debt, either you are or you're not, but just know that there's other people that are like you that can do the same thing that have done it. Yeah, really good. So if people want to keep up with you and see what's next for you as you go on this journey, where can they find you on the internet? They can find me at, my website is briannabrown.com. That's B-R-I-A-N-A-B-R-O-W-N-E.com or on my Instagram, which is naturalgalb. So that's natural G-Y-A-L-B on Instagram. Awesome. We'll be sure to have the links in the show notes of this episode Rihanna, we're proud of you, man. You knocked yes. them student loans up so out of much. here. Yeah. Great Thank job. So and, Love the good work. We know that Thank you me. are on the path that you need to be on. So salute to you. And thank you for sharing this with our audience today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.